I'm a simple girl who feels most at home sitting at my kitchen table, my sticky farm table, surrounded by my really cute husband, five kids, three dogs, and a mouse that refuses to leave us alone. But this week, I'm in one of the most amazing places I've ever visited, Florence, Italy. Florence has it all. History, architecture, art, food, romance, and some of the friendliest people I've ever met. The old city is like a living history book. Every street is quaint and charming. The food is amazing, especially from the little tucked away restaurants found on the streets and alleyways. There are museums on almost every block, famous statues in every square, or piazza as they're called in Italy. It's no wonder Florence is considered to be one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Florence as we know it and can experience it today is beautiful. But if you take a closer look at the history of Florence, you'll see that this charming, wonderful place wasn't always so charming or wonderful. In fact, if I were to trace the history of Florence, there were conflicts and extreme struggles throughout the centuries. You might say that Florence was a city with a tendency to come unglued, kind of like me, maybe even like you. Do you ever get worn out from trying to deal with your raw emotions like anger, frustration, bitterness, resentment? You know those feelings that you hide from people that you want to impress, but spew on those you love the most? Me too. That's why I wrote this study, Unglued. My last book, Made to Cray, was about what I put in my mouth. Unglued? It's about the struggle of what comes out of my mouth. And rest assured, as we walk through these next six sessions, you won't find me pretending to be a preachy expert shining my halo. No, I'm your gut honest friend who lays my own struggles out on the table and will quite honestly probably make you feel a little bit better about yourself or at least more normal in your own struggles. You see, there's nothing wrong with having feelings. Feelings are good. God made us to be emotional creatures who experience the highs and the lows of life through our feelings. But while feelings are great indicators of what we're experiencing, they shouldn't dictate how we react to our circumstances. Yes, feelings should be indicators, not dictators. So in this study, we'll process together how to fight for our relationships rather than against them deal with the realities of messy, aggravating everyday life situations without yelling or stewing, identify the kind of reactor that we are, and the practical biblical help to become more peaceful, yes, peaceful, more peaceful than we ever thought possible. And you definitely want to read the Unglued book and follow along in the Unglued Participants Workbook with this DVD. We are about to experience significant life change in a setting more beautiful than you can imagine. So if you're ready, and I know I am, let's step into the city and into six lessons that have changed my life, and I'm praying they will change yours as well. Unglued, making wise choices in the midst of raw emotions. Like most ancient cities with a long history of wars and conflict, Florence has been surrounded by protective walls for most of its existence. In fact, the walls surrounding Florence have been built, widened, and rebuilt six different times since the first wall was built in the second century AD. Today, there's not much evidence left of the walls that protected the city. They were demolished over the years as the city continued to outgrow its boundaries. But the wall I'm standing next to, 
The Oltrano Wall, which sits right at the city's edge, is one of the very few preserved pieces of what these walls used to look like. This wall was part of the sixth and final wall built, which was completed in 1333. That wall was over 27,000 feet in length, included 73 towers, 15 gates, and contained a city measuring one square mile, equal to five times of the previous walls. The wall I'm standing next to, well, it's about 30 feet tall. Pretty impressive, isn't it? So the day I turned in unglued, the day that I finished writing it and sent it off to my editor, well, that very night I had a little issue where I sort of came unglued. My daughter called me from her cell phone. She had been out running errands and needed help carrying some packages in from her car. So she called and asked if I would come outside to help her, which normally I don't mind doing at all. But on this particular night, it was drizzling, which makes it a huge sacrifice because you see, I was on day one of my hair. Now, let me explain something about my hair. You see, day one, I shampoo and condition the whole thing. And then I blow dry my hair and I straighten my hair. I wait a little while and I straighten it again. So then on day two, I don't wash my whole head of hair. I just wash this little strip of bangs and these side pieces right here. And then I blow dry them and flat iron them and I'm good to go. I can just let all this kind of hang out. And then on day three, I wash just a little bit more of my bangs and side pieces and I blow dry them and flat iron them and just let the back just kind of hang. Now, I know there are some of you sitting there thinking, what in the world, this woman, she doesn't wash her hair every day? Well, no, you see, my hair is quite the situation. It takes too much time. And so this is my little trick to save a lot of time. And those people that are sitting with you, your friends who are day three hair people, they will understand. You can ask them. They'll explain it all to you.